Hi, I'm Mary, and you're watching Shaw Creators, and I am joined by Soren, who is the product specialist for the MV88 Plus, which has just come out. Mm -hmm. And I am currently recording in Uptown Recording, a studio in Chicago, and I have set myself the challenge of actually recording a full track with the MV88 Plus. So, because Soren is product specialist for the MV88 Plus, and it's your baby, mm -hmm. You're going to teach me how to use it. We are very excited to see what you can do with it. I am hoping to do vocals, guitar, both electric and acoustic. Not sure what to do about bass just yet. Okay. Because usually that would be DI'd. We can dial it up. But that's a challenge to be accomplished tomorrow and then drum kit because there is a drum kit in the studio and I'm not a drummer but I think with a little bit of editing and it's going to be like a proper studio track too so it's going to have it's going to be edited it's going to be mixed it's not going to be a motive session which is right just on. you know live there in the environment we're going to really test it out especially in such a beautiful studio so should we open it up let's do it let's see what you got I mean I know it's in the box now. I also know what's in the face. <laughs> <laughs> this is the video kit. Everything wraps up. A nice, one nice little box there. There's a bunch of accessories in the kit, so uh, we wanted to give you one thing to throw in your bag and not eight or nine little cables to keep track of. Uh, we got enough stuff in our backpacks these days. Yes. And I, I have found, I, I, will, um, I will admit, I've already been using the MV88 Plus on my own YouTube channel for a while because it's super versatile for interviews, mm -hmm. uh, for live sessions, and just having the little stand, the Manfrotto stand, which has the nice Shaw silver logo That's on right. it. But it also connects to you know any iOS device That's and right. Android. And some Android devices. Uh, make sure you check the Shure website. Yes. Wait, tee me up there. Uh, check the Shure website, shure.com slash motive compatibility. We to, we're testing some Android phones. Just want to make sure that it works for your phone before you go out and buy. Uh, Android tends to work a little different than iOS, but there is a USB-C cable in the box and uh, on the Android phones we've tested, it's, it's super cool. It works really, really well. Yeah, so that, that's an opportunity as well in future for recording straight into Logic using the MV88. Definitely, Or definitely. whatever software you use. And for podcasting, I've already used it remotely with um, Jacob Collier. He was using his MV88 Plus on the other side, awesome. capturing audio. I was using an MV88 Plus, just sat in front of me, just pointed you know, at my mouth, um, and I was headphone monitoring. And it was just, it was just magical. Awesome. So, awesome. And then just being able to like, you know, sync it. Yeah, it's a little pop-up podcast studio. It's perfect. So I, I am already familiar enough to venture into this sort of challenge because that's why I'm pretty confident about what it's gonna, what it's gonna achieve. Awesome. Even though you're an 88 plus veteran, I'll, uh, let's see if we can teach you a couple tricks. Yes. It's also useful because of having the pockets, you know when you've missed something out. Oh, nice. I like it. However, it's not replacing <clears throat> the MV88 because that is still available. Exactly. And that microphone really is responsible for quite a lot of the videos on my YouTube channel starting in 2016. This is how it looks when it's set up. And I've got the Motive Audio app open. Um, and I'll set it on airplane mode. Cool. There we go. So uh, let's talk about your video tomorrow. What are you doing first? What instrument are you doing first? Probably start with drums. I like it. So uh, here's how I would set up drums. The, mm -hmm. uh, the loud mode in the app, the icon all the way on the right that looks like a speaker, that kind of sets it up for drums. Um, it's drums and uh, loud electric guitars, anything loud basically, because mm -hmm. it dumps the gain all the way down to the bottom here. It uh, does a little bit of behind the scenes EQ. So I would try that, and here's a, here's a pro tip for you that might work on the bass as well. Um, if you use the flat mode in the middle there, that actually is the only one that turns off the high pass mode, so you get a crazy amount of low end for it. If you're doing like a vlog or a, 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 some, just some speech, it's usually way too much low end. But if you're recording bass guitar or drums, that's actually the only way to totally turn off all the high pass stuff. So you really okay. open up that bottom end. Uh, this little thing, even though it's a tiny microphone, can sound pretty amazing on, on big, loud, low frequency things. Uh, so definitely try that for the, uh, for the bass amp. 
The, uh, there's also a little five band EQ down there as it seems that you're using, which is awesome. Um, so you can also, you know, always dial in a little bit more low end or if you need a little bit more high mids out of your bass to help it cut through the mix a little bit, uh, you can do it uh, right there from the app. So yeah, for drums, obviously, uh, stereo is great. It's a big part of drum recording and you can really just put it out in front of the kick drum, a couple of feet. Um, you can also put it sort of by the drummer's ears. I've tried that before that, that works out. Kind of just depends on how intimate of a sound you're going for. If it's a, a big loud rock thing and you want a lot of kick drum uh, and snare drum forward, then put it out in front of the kit. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're looking for a little bit more intimate thing, um, putting it right by the drummer's ears can be a really easy way to do stereo miking like this because the drummer uh, um, you know, should be able to control that type of thing. And uh, it's a great way of just whatever the drummer's hearing the microphone here so if the drummer's bashing the hi-hats then that's what the microphone will hear but and uh, i guess it will be you know yeah kind of panned where it's exactly to be. And then when you play your toms or your crash over mm -hmm. here you get that nice sort of you know like you're sitting behind the drum set kind of mm -hmm. stereo image uh, especially in the the widest se uh, setting there on the stereo for drums do the loud mode because mm -hmm. that turns on some of the compression which can really okay. help just kind of glue that drum sound together okay um the medium or the heavy are the two that i'd recommend for drums um, heavy can be pretty heavy. That's more of like a four on the floor, you know, real mm -hmm. thick rock thing. Mm -hmm. um, medium's a nice kind of in between. Um, and keep that stereo nice and wide. Uh, when you're doing bass, that's definitely do a flat mode because, like I said, that removes all the high pass filters that are built into the other mode, and that'll really open up the bottom end. And I'd probably just do the cardioid for that. You can actually get a little bit more, uh, even a little bit more low in another proximity effect so you can. Uh, dial this in there and then put it either really close to the mic and, uh, or I'm sorry, really close to the amp and dial the gain down or just kind of back it up until it sounds natural. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really easy to dial it in because there's a headphone jack there, even you'll probably be monitoring through the nice studio facilities here, but it's a really easy way to just kind of quickly check your mic position. Uh, same deal on acoustic guitar if you're the ones playing. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be able to hear where the microphone is hearing and play a little bit and then easily move it, you know, because uh, microphone positioning is, uh, is half the battle on, on all those things yes. there. Uh, what else are you doing? So we got drums and we got electric bass. Yeah. I'm assuming there's some electric guitar because it's a Mary song. <laughs> there will be electric guitar okay. with a tiny, uh, well, orange rocker 15 awesome. that has just one speaker. Okay, cool. The stereo for something like that would be a nice way to kind of add some room tone in. Okay. Uh, it, there won't be any, uh, you know, it won't be moving left to right in your stereo image at all, but no. the wider you open it, you can, it'll sound like an amp in a room. And then okay. as you focus it in, it'll sound more like the focus of the amp there. So it's another way to use that. It's just a creative decision in the oh, studio. And I'll definitely open again, that up then. Plug it in the headphones and just kind of dial on it. Yeah, you can get it nice and natural if you open it up, mm -hmm. uh, especially in a really nice sounding room like this. Just mm -hmm. definitely take advantage of that. Uh, and then acoustic guitar, there's the uh, there's an acoustic guitar setting. It's built mm -hmm. just for that. Yep. Uh, it does some behind the scenes EQ, but... Uh, nothing too crazy. It's it's stuff that every sound person would do before you even pull up the mic. You don't need the below 100 hertz stuff for an acoustic guitar. Yeah. There's a, you know a little dip in the low mids, a little add a, a little shine, a little sparkle mm -hmm. uh, in the high mids, that type of thing. So uh, the acoustic mode gets you gets you pretty much there uh, really quickly. Um, and then of course you can EQ from there. And mic positioning on acoustic guitar can be uh, a crucial part of the sound too. So uh, again, just popping the headphones and kind of moving around until. You're liking what you're hearing, and then uh, plug in and go. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And then, of course, for vocals, mm -hmm. uh, we have a speech uh, mode built in there. Um, again, you probably don't need the stereo aspect, but same sort of deal with the electric amp, where you can kind of dial in how much room uh, that you want in your recording. Uh, otherwise, just the cardioid works. You get a nice focused uh, sound right in front of you. You don't need it moving left and right in uh, in your headphones. Um, it's a nice subtle EQ curve back there, but kind of depending on your voice, you can dial in you know, a little bit more high mids, get some, some breathy details. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I would do if I was mixing your voice. Um, mm -hmm. But you can do a whole bunch of stuff. If you need a bit more low end support and the EQ helps a little bit, um, I would recommend playing with the compressor for just uh, a, just an audition. The light okay. and the medium on, the, on singing vocals can, um, can give you some sort of different creative results. The, the light's very transparent. You don't hear it very much. Just gives you a little bit of a, of a level consistency when you're recording. Yeah. The medium's a little bit more of a, of a tonal thing, uh, where as you, as you get a little bit louder, uh, I don't know, it just sounds a little bit more like warm and compressed. You just kind of glues mm -hmm. it together. You mm -hmm. get less variations uh, in the dynamics. So again, it's just a, you know, uh, it just seems like sort of nerdy audio settings, but they're actually a big part of the, the aesthetic after you record it and can be used as creative choices too. So uh, it's a fun little easy mic to experiment with. Um, and then, you know, 
get your tips and tricks and come into a wonderful studio like this and, and do a track. Thank you very much for all the tips You're and tricks. You're very welcome. Can't wait to hear it. I'm so excited. So I'm sure you'll see the end result by the time this video is out. But thanks for watching Shaw Creators and we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.